Extreme Collectibles here, wanting to know if you ever get a statue that you really like and you don't know why. That's my question that I'm trying to answer for myself. I just got this one in because he's part of a line I'm getting and uh, I don't know why I like him so much. Uh, as we go through the review, maybe, maybe I'll have an epiphany and heaven's bells will go off and we'll find out. But there's something about it I just really like and I can't find anything specific that points to that. Maybe I'm just going crazy, so, or going more crazy. Extreme Collectibles here with Prime One One Third Scale Justice League Batman. This is the latest of their Justice League line, so they are releasing from the cinematic movie Justice League. They're releasing uh, Cyborg, which I already have. I've done a review on that. Go check that out. Uh, Batman, played by Ben Affleck. Uh, Superman by Henry Cavill. Cavill, I think that's his last name. Wonder Woman and Aquaman. So I have all of them on order. This is the second one to arrive. I think Superman will be next in about three or four months. And like Cyborg, I was really hesitant, but uh, I have tons of one-third scale DC Batmans so, from Prime 1, and they're all phenomenal. And as I said in the intro, there's something I really like about this, and I really can't put my finger on it. I do like the fact that there's an unmasked portrait uh, that uh, portrays Ben Affleck, kind of, which we're, we're going to talk about. But uh, yeah, so they made 1,300 of these, uh, 500 were the exclusive version, and 800 were the collector's edition. The only difference is the exclusive version comes with the unmasked portrait. Here's a close-up of it right here. Where the collector's edition and the exclusive versions, they all come with the mask portrait right here. Hear all that running around upstairs? It's driving me nuts again. There also is another switch out. Your right hand is a closed fist if you want it. Or you can have it holding the grappling gun. And you'll see some close-ups here. The grappling gun is pretty badass. I don't know why you would not have it on there. So. Um, pretty easy to assemble with the exception of his cape. The base is one piece. Batman minus, uh, there's two pieces for his hands and arms on the right side, one piece for his arm on the left side, and then the portrait and the cape. Cape was a little hard to get in. Um, and you'll see on some of my pictures it wasn't the best. It's better now, but as I said, I purchased him. They're at, he's actually going around Doomsday. I'm redoing my DC room a little bit today because of this. So I'm uh, going to put all of them around Doomsday, uh, one-third Doomsday. I also have a review on that, shameless plug. So I uh, purchased him, 999 bucks plus shipping. I originally had him through Sideshow, but he was delayed. So I went through Prime One economy shipping, and then that was delayed. So I canceled that, and I went back to Sideshow when he got in stock. Uh, thankfully, because it was delays, I didn't lose any no reserve deposits. Kind of a pain in the ass to jump back and forth, but uh, it is what it is. So, uh, height on this guy, he's like 36 inches. I don't want to stand up because I'm... I hope you thought it or said it out loud. It's true. But uh, width is uh, 17 inches. And depth, it's a good size base. It's about 16. For exact dimensions, go check out Prime One or Sideshow's website. But uh, yeah, packing was really good. Uh, they put a lot of extra stuff because as you see, you know, it's kind of an awkward angle with his body. So I was really surprised by that. It is a very heavy piece, um, heavier than you know most are. But uh, my one thirds, these one thirds, they actually do go on the floor. I hate that they go on the floor, but you can maximize space like that. And the way it's set up is pretty cool. When it's all done, eventually I'll show you guys or on a room tour. That'll be one of the last room tour play uh, uh, room tours I do. So.
Last thing about this, before we jump into the concept and design, I am not a Ben Affleck Batman fan. I am not a Ben Affleck Batman hater. A uh, few things I think he brought to the role that were really good is that he kind of bought, brought that really buff Batman to the role, uh, a lot of brutality, a lot of strength, and also kind of that dark Batman, you know, with the branding and the voice. I, I really enjoyed that, that he brought that to the role. I'm always going to be a... Um, Christian Bale, uh, Dick Rider, because I just, I absolutely love those. Not the Dick Rider, but a Dick Rider. And I think he did a lot of good things for the role. I'm glad he's not in it anymore, though, because he just wasn't my favorite. Uh, he's probably my fourth favorite. Christian Bale, Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck. I hated George Clooney. I hated Val Kilmer. So, am I missing one? I mean, I, besides, you know, like Adam West and whatnot, but... If I am, let me know. I'm really, really out of it. I just filmed another review, and it was the first of four, and I said it's going to be horrible all day long. And they're going to air at different times, so you may or may not have watched that other review yet. So jumping into the concept and design, some crazy weird stuff going on here, and a lot of it has to do with the base. On the base, you have elements that fit into the Justice League movie. You have elements that fit into Batman. You have elements that tie to the other bases they're doing, and you have elements that just don't make any sense. So we're gonna study that, uh, the close-ups in Paint and Sculpt, but starting here at the bottom, you kind of see it. So first, it's a Grim Reaper, uh, kind of on a building top, uh, right above the Batman symbol. So the cyborg statue has the cyborg symbol on front, and you traditionally see Batman perched upon a gargoyle or something similar on top of a building. I don't know why they chose a Grim Reaper. Then all around the sides, which you really can't see right now, there's kind of that uh, futuristic mother box, uh, Kryptonian ship type stuff going on. And his pose on top of it is uh, really, really cool. I mean, he's a classic Batman on a building pose, obviously. He's sitting back, he's relaxing, he's just defeated the enemy, he's overwatching the city, whatever's going on. One thing when we talk about concept and design is did they nail the likeness of Ben Affleck? And you'll see here on a few of the shots I've had already and when we do the close-ups and talk about paint and sculpt, you'll see that I think they did a pretty good job with the masked portrait and I think they did an okay job with the unmasked portrait, which is unfortunate. I would have rather had it flipped because I'm going to display the unmasked portrait because it's different. And with that being said, when we get to the paint and sculpt, uh, the paint and sculpt on the unmasked portrait is awesome if you don't look at it like they're trying to do a Ben Affleck uh, likeness. So, uh, cool concept, the design is really good, no issues, no seams. Um, the cape is kind of a pain in the ass until you figure out how to do it, but it takes you like five minutes to figure out how to do it. Um, yeah, so very happy with it. The one thing I would say is, you know, it's a mixed media cape and there are no wires. So you can, it's not posable. However, in this kind of position, it really would just be flowing to the back and hanging. So with that, let's uh, really dive into the paint and sculpt. And there's, there's again, nothing that really pops out that, that that's amazing. The base is very good but I just really like this statue. So there's all these different parts of the base. Let's look at the front here. Most of the base has these different colors in it. It's these blacks and browns and uh, uh, grays uh, to sim uh, and silvers to you know capture the uh, intentional stuff they put in there, the movie related stuff, the uh, building top stuff, the Batman stuff. So, uh, with the bat signal, it looks really good right here on the front. I like the coloring. It almost looks like it's a grain pattern, that kind of stuff going on there. Sorry, I'm texting as I'm talking to you right now. I really like the Grim Reaper. Really well done. Obviously, it, like I said, it kind of looks like a, a statue on top of a building, and you can see those different uh, brown dirt colors in there. Really cool sculpt, the hollow eyes, the teeth. Really scary looking. I like that. And then here's some pictures of uh, the different parts of the sides. And if you saw my cyborg review, a lot of the same. Kind of looks like that Kryptonian mother box type stuff going on. Uh, the tentacles coming up the side and all of them are like this, I believe. I like that they stayed with that. This one's not as good as cyborg. Um, 
but it is good and there's a lot of metal going on so it's kind of a contrast that hey this is a old stone building but then there's some metal futuristic stuff going on and speaking of that that stone part if you look at the top where he's actually sitting on uh, so not the green reaper head but kind of the cape flowing back all this cool texture and design and broken parts that are actually part of the grim reaper so it again also it symbolizes that darkness to uh, batman that's pretty cool yeah so it's with the base i think the cool part of it is it's a good paint good sculpt and there's so much interpretation of what they were trying to say or what they could say out of the base because there's so much stuff going on. So I think that, that may be one reason I really like the statue. Unfortunately, the base is not uh, a big viewable part where I'm displaying it. But let's get to Batman. Um, really quick is Cape, and I don't even think I took pictures of this, so I'll just show you right here. Uh, it's a mixed media cape. On, on the outside, it's kind of a shinier, glossy leather with some wear on the bottom. The inside's more of a felt. Uh, nothing to write home about, nothing crazy. What the hell is that? Looks like there's some blood on mine. Ah, realism. Hopefully it's, I have no cuts in my hand and contracted anything uh, new. I've pretty much got everything else. But let, let's jump, jump to Batman. So first his boots. Okay job on his boots. A um, lot of folds, a lot of stitching. Uh, they don't look super cool. I would have expected Batman to have more of a uh, kind of army type resilient boot, but it looks okay. And that's the same on the bottom where there's some tread moving all the way to the top. And then looking at his suit and his anatomy and his legs, first of all, his suit is really textured up. A little bit too much for me. I think they could have gone a little more subtle, but uh, really good sculpt here. Uh, the texture doesn't hide the uh, other parts that you wouldn't expect to see, like you can see that he has knee pads in there, you can see the different folds, you can see his muscles, you can see the stitching. So I do like the fact that they really went crazy with the texture, but they didn't sacrifice any of the sculpt. And it's that, uh, you know, kind of boring grayish blackish color. It's more gray than black. And the texture also is not 100% the same everywhere. It kind of, it, it varies quite a bit. And I don't know if that's a QC issue or if that's intentional. But moving up to Batman's belt, his utility belt, I'm a little disappointed in this. I like that it's different than a lot of the other Batmans out there, but they could have done a little bit more detail in some of the sculpting and they could have added some stuff like grappling hooks or grenades or uh, a batarang would have been great sticking out. It kind of looks like it was an afterthought. And I do like the weathering where you can tell it used to be gold, so he's been at this for a long time. And then his torso, again, his, uh, he has an armored six pack to protect him. That's not his real six pack, but you can still see some muscle definition below it. Some great stitching throughout. I love the Batman symbol, looks really good. And it has this unique texture on it that almost makes it like uh, almost wooden, if you would. I don't know how they did that, but it looks really cool. And then his biceps, again, you can see the armor plates beneath his uh, uniform, which I, I, I like. You can tell it's still a uniform, not necessarily body armor, but he has body on, armor underneath it. And that's evident on both arms. Then his gloves, very similar to his boots. They look good, nothing to write home about. Some layering on there. Uh, they look like they're gloves with a lot of layers, so it would actually take a while to put on. And a few like uh, abrasions, so you can tell they've been in battles. His uh, grappling hook gun looks really cool. Uh, a lot of detail on this. I like it a lot. I like the the hooks they put in there and the you know firing tube. A lot of detail on this. They did really good. And then I want to look at his mask portrait here. Again, really good likeness, I think, to Ben Affleck in the costume. Um, his eyes are slightly crossed, which I'm not a huge fan of. But uh, you see some of the folds in the cowl uh, to show his expression. Very serious, very somber expression. And same thing uh, with his uh, mouth. His lips are kind of pursed together and they did a fantastic job sculpting and painting the uh, five o'clock shadow on him. Very similar to what they had in the movie. Some cool flesh tones in there and I like how they switched it up around his lips. 
And then moving to his unmasked portrait, again, if you, certain angles it has more likeness than uh, others to Ben Affleck, but if you look at it just for the paint and sculpt, the hair looks good, not great. I think they could have uh, done a little bit more definition in between the strands. Uh, really good job on his eyebrows. They're sculpted in, they're painted in. Here his expressions a little less intense, so you don't see as many wrinkles in his face, but skin tones on this are really good. His eyes look a little better in this one. Uh, look like they're really staring at something specific. Kind of a different expression around his mouth and he has a lot more stubble here. But you can still see uh, good colors in, in his mouth. Uh, kind of that pink fleshy, uh, really pink uh, lip color. His ears look great. Fantastic sculpt on his ears. Nose again, spot on. Really good sculpt and paint on uh, the unmasked portrait here. But like I said, you gotta remember that it's not Ben Affleck, well, Batfleck. Uh, I wonder if I'm ever gonna get a Robert Pattinson Batman statue. So what I would like you to comment today is your thoughts on the piece, of course, and uh, who your favorite Batman is. And everyone that's played in movies or um, uh, TV shows, so Adam West included all of them. Uh, let me know who your favorite is. Usually Christian Bale always wins. But uh, yeah, and let me know why, because if you just vote for something blindly, you're a sheep. It's a problem with our country that I live in. But uh, appreciate you guys watching, and I uh, can't wait to add this to the collection, which I'm going to do right now. Take care.